What might be the impact on Europe of high-end climate change in Central Asia? Central Asia consists of the former Soviet republics of Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. The natural environment in this region is rich but fragile, and to date, there has been limited research on the regional impacts of climate change. The Central Asia case study focuses on the implications that different climate and socio-economic changes would have in Central Asia, how these could affect and be affected by neighboring China and Russia, and how Europe might respond. When thinking about how the world would be affected by high-end climate change, we felt it was really important to have a case study that was outside the borders of the EU. We chose Central Asia because it's a very climate sensitive region of the world and actually we know very little about how climate impacts will affect the region as a whole. So what could a future above 2 degrees Celsius look like in Central Asia? Central Asia internationally is really acknowledged as uh, being one of the most vulnerable regions to climate change. And as a matter of fact, we can feel it is really happening as of today. In the first scenario, sustainable socio-economic development drives a transition towards sustainable economies. There's also a reduction in out-migration, conflict and authoritarianism. However, despite these changes, climate change remains moderately high with increased risks of floods, droughts and landslides. In the second scenario, a fragmented region breaks down under pressure from extreme levels of climate change, regional animosity and resource-hungry foreign powers. Heat mortality increases 20-fold, scarce resources drive conflict, floods and droughts worsen and water is weaponized. In the third scenario, globally well-connected elites consolidate state power, suppress dissent and develop infrastructure to mitigate local environmental risks. Severe inequality but strategic leadership means a lucky few can cope with moderately high climate change, including average temperature increases of around 3 degrees Celsius. The fourth scenario sees Central Asia, unconcerned by environmental issues, embrace a free market, technology-driven economic approach. Development-focused sustainable development goals are met. The region as a whole stabilizes and mobile young talent remains. However, extreme climate change eventually proves too great a challenge. Average temperatures rise by over 5 degrees Celsius and a climate crisis causes social cohesion to crumble. So one of the surprising things about the Central Asia case study was that uh, some scenarios that we see as quite negative from a European perspective are perceived to be much more positive by stakeholders in Central Asia. For example, a future that is uh, based on fossil fuel exploitation will probably bring quite big socio-economic benefits to people in Central Asia as they can exploit and export oil and gas resources to other countries. These scenarios bring about a number of key impacts and risks associated with the future above 2 degrees Celsius. Glaciers may reduce by 60% or more by the end of the century, increasing peak river flows. Additionally, there will be an increase in extreme precipitation days. Combined with peak river flows, this would fundamentally change long-term prospects for sustainable water management in Central Asia. Water adaptation measures will be critical for key industries such as cotton and wheat production, which could experience significant losses. I think this region has a big deal with um, the nexus approach on how water, energy, food systems are interconnected. Faced with these projected impacts, the Impressions Project worked with stakeholders from Central Asia to develop a shared vision for the year 2100. The project team also considered the EU's 2016 Global Strategy aim to address fragility in Central Asia by building state and societal resilience, as well as exploring how the EU could use its strengths to help Central Asia achieve a sustainable future. All the stakeholders and the facilitators and the researchers work together. And this was for me a very new way of working. So for me, the results or the outputs from impressions are as important as the process. Two potentially transformational solutions to Central Asian challenges were identified. 
The first of these is reaching agreement on how to manage water that crosses political borders. A sustainable agreement would create a positive ripple effect across Central Asia for sectors such as energy, food and health. Ambitious attempts to better connect Central Asia internally and to its neighbours could also boost stability and development and help Central Asia achieve a sustainable future. A number of policy recommendations could enable Europe to support Central Asia's transition to a more sustainable future. Continuing to pursue a regional approach, in addition to bilateral agreements which support transformations towards a sustainable future. Aligning long-term sustainability objectives and short-term priorities such as job creation and investment. Launching a new European Energy Diversification Initiative for a phased transformation to clean energy economies. Improving data, monitoring and access to finance for meeting environmental challenges. Preparing strategic responses to the plausible, undesirable futures in which Europe becomes further marginalised in Central Asia. Through these actions, Europe can use its competitive advantages, such as high capacities and credibility on education, environment, private sector, trade, rural development and health, to help Central Asian republics achieve a more sustainable future. All the system that has been put in place to obtain uh, results and work on the scenarios is very precious. And this is the real value of the Impressions project. High and climate change will fundamentally change the uh, opportunities in Europe for achieving a good life for the European citizens. And importantly, um, how the rest of the world is affected will, will have a big influence on how the lives of European citizens can succeed in the future. So I will say there's a big urgency for us to adapt, to adjust, and there's a lot of work. And the impacts are already here, but we have to adapt quickly and faster.